shalam, shalam, shalawam, kowam yeshoral, halalahaya, 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 all praise to Ahaya, Ya Ahaya, God, the existing, Ya, which mean God, and Haya, which mean am, is, be, halalahaya sha, halalahaya sha, halalahaya sha, Yasha means Savior. So all praise to God, the existing, my Savior. Yahaya Yashai. This is Macintosh from the 12 tribes of Yasharal, of Israel, specifically from the tribe of Lauya, Levi, the so called Haitians, the priests of the, congr the, the, priests of the con congression of Yasharal. The nation Zion. We are one family. These are our 12 tribes right here on the screen. So today we're going to be learning a lot about um, nationality and how to proclaim and declare your Hebrew Israelite nationality and what pages in the Bible supports your claims. So this is going to be important because when you go to court, you're going to have to um, to ex you're going to have to declare some of these things if you want um, to protect yourself as best as you can. Because knowledge is power. Knowledge is a key. It is a key to the mind. It is a key to the consciousness, and it is a key to unlock you from your mental slavery, as well as unlocking you from your spiritual slavery. So may the Most High Yahayasha. Cast all of your imagination and demons into the bottomless pit of Sheol so that there is no imagination or stumbling blocks that make you cannot understand what we're going to digest today. So make sure you grab a pen or a pencil and a pad, paper, or wherever you take notes on to take notes. By the way, today, according to the Roman Julian season calendar, today is July the 20th. 2014 of Roman Julian season time. According to our seven day creation calendar, our Hebrew Israelite calendar, because yes, we have our own calendar as well, in our own language, our own tradition and culture and rules and all that stuff. According to our seven day um, cycle, um, seven day cycle calendar, today is the, the um, pardon me, today is the sixth day of the the fourth no pardon me today's the sixth day of the fifth month according to enoch calendar our six our seven day week calendar which begins at even and ends at even from even to even which means from sunset to sunset from sunrest to sunrest when the sun go down there's a new day so today is the sixth day of the fifth month of the enoch calendar All right, hope you guys are having a lovely day. Let's go ahead and start beginning. I want to start off with giving blessings all to the 12 tribes of Yeshurel. Tawada, Tawada, Ahaya, Ahaya Brakata, Judah. Ahaya Brakata, Benjamin. Ahaya Brakata, Levi. Ahaya Brakata, Simeon. Ahaya Brakata, Zubalan. Ahaya Shur, Ahaya Brakata, Ephraim. Ahaya Shur, Ahaya Brakata Manasi. And Ephraim is actually the people who's um, from Samaria. So some of this stuff is not fully accurate. It needs to be checked upon. But um, I don't know. I haven't connected Samaria with Puerto Rico yet. But Brakata Manasi. Brakata, Ahaya Brakata Manasi. Ahaya Brakata God. Ahaya Brakata Reuben. Ahaya Brakata Naftali. Ahaya Brakata Shur. Yahaya Brakata Issachar. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Gather yourselves together. Ye gather, yeah, gather yourselves together, O nation, not desired. And this is how their name looked like in ancient Paleo Hebrew in the um, language of the Holy Tongue. La Shawan Kwadash, Holy Tongue. So 
Yahaya, which means God exists. Yahaya Shah, Yasha means Savior. So Yahaya Shah, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Judah, Ahayada, which means God thinks, the great I am thinks. Ahayada or Ahayawada. Benjamin, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Benjamin, which means son of the right. Banyamyan. Oh, continue on. So Levi, Lao Ya, Yahaya Shah, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Levi, which is Lawaya in ancient Paleo tongue. Join to me. So Ahaya, Yahaya Brakata, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Shamiwan, affliction heard. Yahaya Shah, Brakata Zabalawan, which means dwelling. Yahaya, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Aparayam, which mean I am fruitful, Ephraim. Yahaya Shah, Brakata Manashe, which mean made to forget. Yahaya Shah, Brakata God, which mean true. Yahaya Brakata, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Ra'aban, which is Reuben. See, it's a son. Ra'awaban. Ra'awaban. It's Ra'awaban. So, Yahaya Shah Brakata Ashar, which means happy. Yahaya Brakata Naftalia. Naftali, which means my wrestling. Yahaya Shah Brakata Yashashar. Yashakar. Yasha. Yasha Shakar. Yashakar. Yashakar. Yashashakar. 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 Kowam Yasharal. Kowam Yasharal. Kowam Yasha Allah. Yasha Allah. Allah mean God too, but in Arabian, and it also mean almighty power or um, power angels in ancient Paleo Hebrew. May the, the four angels of the four quadrants of the universe also be with us, appointed by God. Mikael, Michael, Archangel Michael, Mayakal, Ahaya, which means he who is like the great I am, he who is like God, who he who is like he who exists. Also, Ahaya, Yeshaya, Yahaya Shah, Yahaya Shah, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabarayal, Ahaya, which means God is my strength, or Ahaya is my strength, or he that exists in living is my strength. So God is my strength, because God is the great I am. God is Ahaya. So Yeshaya, so Yahaya Shah, Yahaya Shah, Brakata Araraya, Archangel Yoriel. Which mean, um, pardon me, Arch, yeah, Archangel Uriel or Ariel, which mean um, the light of God, the light of God, the light of I am that I am, which mean the truth of I am that I am, the truth of Ahaya, the light of God, or the lion of God, or the fire of God, Arawariel, Ahaya, yes, Yahaya Shah, Brakata. Raphael, or what you guys call Raphael, 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 which means God is my doctor, God is my healer, Ahaya is my healer, I am that I am is my healer, he that exists, he that only exists is my healer. So Ahaya Brakata, Yasha, Yahaya Shah Brakata, Yahaya Shah Brakata, Bahasham Yahaya Shah. Alright guys, so I hope you guys are starting to get it because I'm going to be hitting you guys with a lot of Hebrew left and right here and there from time to time. So you guys can um, learn the language which is very important. That's part of our culture too. So Yasha means Savior and Al and Ya mean God. So Yasha Ya, which is the name of God, my Savior or Savior God. And Yasha Al, like Yasharal, all means Savior God. So Yashaya, 
Yasha Allah, Yasharal. Halal means praise, and Anahaya mean I am. So glory, hallelujah, Shaya Haya. Praise Savior God, I am, in the name of Savior Christ. And this is ancient Halo pre Halo Hebrew. So halal halal mean all praises. All praises to Ahaya Shai. Ahaya Shai. Ahaya Yasha. Ahaya Shai. Yahaya Shai. Yasha Haya. Yasha Haya. Yashaya. Ahaya Washai. Um Ahawashai means savior as well, salvation. So Ahaya is my salvation. Ahaya Washai. Yahaya Washai, which means God is my salvation. So Halal Abba Shalom, which all praise to the Father of Peace. Aman. So right, before we continue on, I wanted you guys I want you guys to know the true word for um Hebrew. Now that we know Israel is Yesharal. If you decode all the names in ancient Paleo Hebrew. So here we go. So we're a holy nation. Our holy nation is Zion. And we're the 12 tribes of Israel which form the nation of Zion. The six point star is not our emblem or symbol. So hold on one sec. So Hebrew, this word first occurs at give as given to Abraham by the Canaanites. So he's given that name by the Canaanites. So in modern day Hebrew, they call it Ibri. Ibri. If you look in the Strong's Concordance, it's number 5680. Ibri. And it means, it's perhaps a descendant of Eber. Also another name for an Israelite. And the way that you say it in ancient Paleo Hebrew, La Shawan Kwadash, is Ibaraya. Ibaraya. E ba I B A R R A Y. Ibaraya. 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 And it means Hebrews. So we're the Ibaraya. Ibaraya, Yeshualites. The Hebrew Israelites. And that word Eber, th this word right here, Ibri, 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 means Hebrew. Hebrew man, Hebrew man or Hebrew woman. Um, uh, yeah, pretty much Hebrew women. Hebrews, Hebrews, and it's all in the book. Ibaraya, Ibaraya. And it's a patronomic from Eber, an Eberite, in other words, a Hebrew, Eberite, a Hebrew Israelite, or descendant of Eber. So stick with me. All praise to the Most High. May we cast down the imagination and get rid of those stumbling blocks. We're going to learn many things today, and we will be getting into it in a way that everyone will understand so what's ever if you look in the strong's concordance it's number 56 77 so ever a region beyond it means region beyond a descendant of shem also the name of several israelites so the original word is ibara ibara that's ever ibara Hebrew, Ibaraya, 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 Eber is Ibar, 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 I-B-A-R, it's a masculine word, it's a region beyond, a descendant of Shem, also the name of several Hebrew Israelites. And that word descends from the word called Abar. So let's see where that word Abar come from. 
because this is where the word Hebrew come from. So Abar in strong concordance is in number 5674. Abar means to alienate. So the way you say the ancient Hebrew is Ibar, just like Eber. So it's the same word to alienate. Ibar, a place far. Ibar, Ibar, Ibaraya, Ibaraya. And it also means Passover, cross, stream, weighty sea, cross border, boundary, cross over, intervening space, pass, march over, that is bodies of captives, overflow, absolute of invasion, like a flood, pass over, over, of, of waves, over one's head. So Ibar, you can look that up in the Strong Concordance Dictionary if you want to. But that's where that word comes from, Ibar. These fake Jews are not Jews. And it states that in the Bible. So we need to proclaim and declare our nationality, but it begins with knowing who we are, what we stand for, and all that stuff. So I'm going to use the Bible and proof in the Bible to back, back up what I'm saying and to validate everything I'm about to say. So Hebrew, this word first occurs as given to Abram, Abarayam, Abraham, by the Canaanites in Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. Because he had crossed the Euphrates, the Euphrates. The name is also derived from Eber, Ibar, beyond, on the other side, Abarayaham, which is Abraham, and his posterity being called Hebrews, Ibaraya in order to express a distinction between the races east and west of the Euphrates. It may also be derived from Heber, one of the ancestors of Abraham. Genesis chapter 10 verse 24. The term Israelite was used by the Jews of themselves, the Judites of themselves, among themselves. The term Hebrew was the name by which they were known to foreigners. The latter was accepted by the Jews in their external re relations and after the general substitution of the word Jew. It still found a place in that marked and special feature of national contradistinction, the language. So it is one of the class of languages called Semitic because they were chiefly spoken among the descendants of Shem. That's where our language comes from. So if you want to go ahead and read more about that, you can. Um, you can find it on BibleHub.com and type in Hebrew. Once you type in, go, well actually go to Topical and type in Hebrew. Topical. Look at where, the, just go to Bible Hub and try to um, look for Topical. And once you press T-O-P, Topical, type in Hebrew and it'll give you the rest of the information about that. Hold on one sec, my loves. Hello, Rahaya. This is in chapter, this is in the second epistle, Timothy, the second epistle of Timothy, which is on the second book of Timothy, the second letter of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, Ahaya, and is profitable for doctrine. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture you're going to hear today. These aren't my words. All inspiration is all inspired by the presence of he who exists. 
the Alpha, the Omega, the Everlasting, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who will be. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this is how we're going to build our foundation, our nation built and founded on truth. But first of all, we must know how we got to where we're at now, why we are who we are now, says who, and how do I know? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So now if we go into the second book of Peter's chapter, I believe chapter, yeah, chapter 1. Second book of Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So this is a general interpretation. This is what everyone should know and come to terms with. We are Mount Zion and we're formed by the 12 tribes of Israel in the body of Christ, the Godhead, Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Truth, the Holy Spirit of Truth, the Holy Breath, La Shawan Kwadash. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God, holy men of Ahaya, Yahaya Shai, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, Rawak Kwadash, the Spirit of Truth. And now before we wrap that up, we go to John chapter, chapter 3 verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound of the wind blowing thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh. You can't tell when it, where it comes from, and whither it goeth, and where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So be born of the Spirit. Now, if you go over here to John, um, John chapter, okay, John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So we must judge with righteous judgment. At all times and this is profitable for reproof correction and also for teaching righteousness for building the nation of the Most High which must all merge together into one at a point we can't just be our own little groups like that we must work together as one So hold on one second. All right, this is in um, John chapter 14, verse 13. Well, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, Yeshaya, 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 Yahaya Shai, Yahaya Shai. Which people call Yahweh Shai, Yahya Shai, Yahya Shai, Yeshaya, Yeshaya, Yahya Sha, Yahya Sha, Yahya Sha, Yahya Yasha. He that believeth on me, Christ, the works that I do shall do he also, 
so he shall do it also. All the works that Christ do, we will do also if we believe in Christ and keep his words. The works that I, I the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, Christ Yeshua, Yahayashai, that will I do. And the Father may be glorified in the Son, that the Spirit may be glorified in the flesh. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. What did Christ say? If you love me, keep my commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father, that the Father, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. What comforter? One that may abide with you forever. What will be the comforter that will be abiding me with me forever? Verse 17. Even the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit of Truth. The Holy Truth. May the truth be all up in your breath. May the truth be your breath. And may the truth be uttered through your breath. Which is Christ. And ye shall know Christ. And ye shall know the truth. And it shall make you free. It shall be a light for you. Exposing that which is hidden. May you know your nationality after these videos. This is just the warm up. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see. The physical world can't see it because it doesn't believe the truth. Because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live. Ye shall also live. Ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am Ahia in the Father, and ye in me, Yeshaya, Yahayasha, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Who? Who that keeps my commandments? Love one another as you love thyself. Treat your enemies like you would want to be treated. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He will make the truth visible to you. Manifest himself to you. Because Christ is the comforter. The spirit of truth. And he's going to be sending us another comforter which he has. It's time. It's within. So, verse 23. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. So the Father sent me. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, in Christ's name, Yahayasha, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, which means stay in peace, neither let it be afraid, be at peace. That's what he does give to you. Peace within, the peace of mind, the truth. Be set free. Ah. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father. For, for my Father is greater than I. So the Father is greater than him. 
So chapter 15 of John, verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love, which are the commandments. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, to love each other, our group, our people, our tribe. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command. Verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, fish for men like Peter, to bring people to Christ, to the truth. Save them, if you can. We're coming for the lost sheep only, not everybody. And that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, Christ, Yahayashai, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love his own. We're not of this physical world, we're spiritual. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord, than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So I don't expect a lot of people to watch part two, three, and four of these videos. They don't want to be saved, so let them rot. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me, the truth. So if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin, no excuse now, because you know it. You heard it, I came to you. He that, hate, he that hateth me, hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now had they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father's Spirit, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father spirit. He shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. We have been with the truth since the beginning. So now if you look in chapter 16, verse 7 of John, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, which we have learned is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Truth, the Spirit of Truth, which will set you free, will not come unto you if he does not go away. But if I depart, if he go away to the Father, I will send him unto you. Then when will the Spirit, Holy Spirit come to us, which was fulfilled in Acts at the Feast of Pentecost. And that's why we keep that holy day. It is definitely a holy day. So verse 13. So how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear from the Holy Father, the Holy Spirit, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He'll show you all truth, the truth about all things. So we're going to decode a lot of truth about who we are. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. So a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Hold on one sec. 
We're about to end it right here. So this is in um, John chapter 21 verse 24. This is the disciple which testified of these things. And who's these things? And wrote these things. Pardon me. He wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. The testimony of John. And all the disciples who were stating that everything in his Bible is truth under penalties of perjury. Besides what these devils had took out and injected into our Bible. So this is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there, and there are also many other things which Yeshaya did. The which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So now you look in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. We must be in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, whoosh. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. It filled the home. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. So that mean um, double tongue. Uh, speaking in tongues of light, of fire. And it sat upon each of them, and it sat upon them, this Holy Spirit of truth, which descended upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit of truth, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And this is not of private interpretation. So now those who won't want to learn the truth, this is what's going to happen to them. This is in the second book of Thessalonians, chapter chapter 7. For the mystery of iniquity, for the mystery of sin and wrongdoing, do already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord, Yahayasha, Yahayasha, Yeshaya, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all the ceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, Ahaya, shall send them strong delusion. If you want to run away now and continue your delusion, go away. That they should believe a lie. That they should believe not the truth. That they, which is Satan. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, which is, of, which is not for a private interpretation. But had pleasure in unrighteousness, trying to make their own um, their own theories about what God's saying. But we are bound to give things always to God for you, brethren, beloved of our Lord, because God Ahaya hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation, Yesha, through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So the Spirit of the Holy Truth. So ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now we're about to end it over here and begin our lesson for today. This is just the warm up because you guys got to know why we're taking a little bit from here and a little bit from there. And why we're coming to the conclusions we're going to come up to. So like I said in John chapter 8 verse 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, O nation that's not desired. What other nation or what nation on earth is not desired? Look at the twelve. Look at what they've been through. Look at their position in the system. It is very obvious who's been cursed. And it's us Hebrew Israelites, the nation of Zion, Mount Zion. So we must come back to order, law, and justice in order to be reestablished above the people again.
as a peculiar people according to the words of the Almighty. So, Isaiah, Yeshua, chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept is the scripture, line upon line. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. Here a little, and there a little. That's what I'm doing. So this is how we're going to figure out what the Most High is trying to tell us. Yahayasha. So, with stem, for with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Most High, yes, Yahya, was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, and that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So, he did that so those who don't understand would not understand, and for those who understand, to bring it to the light for those that the Most High want to be brought to the water, which I cannot force you to drink, in other words. So the Most High did that on purpose. Here a little, there a little. So hopefully you guys stick with me and don't think I'm trying to twist things up. Obviously, when the Most High tell us to do a little here, a little there, and understand what we're going to be learning today about our culture and about our, our laws, our nation, how to establish this nation righteously and properly. And is it about a certain Hebrew Israelite group? Or is it about what God said in the Bible and coming into one accord with that itself? We're trying to we're going to become in one accord with the Most High Himself. So before we continue. Hold on one second. All right, so now we have to declare this and publish this and put it in um, the public record to stamp, seal, subscribe, and affirm these sayings and affidavits of truth, affidavit of facts. So, this is in Esther chapter 8, verse 9. Then were the king's scribes, legislators, scribes, those who write the law, called at the time in the third month of Enoch, of our calendar. That is the month of Sivan. On, on the three and on the twenty-third day thereof, of the third month. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Judites, the Jews. Ibariat, Ibariat, and to the lieutenants and to the deputies and rulers of the provinces which are from all the places around, are from India unto in Ethiopia. 127 provinces that have written this book, this law, to. 127 provinces. So they should know us by now and who we are in our history that we're not joking, nor is the Most High. We don't want what happened to Egypt happen again to y'all, right? So 127 provinces receive the, our, these book of laws, the, this book of law and the laws we're going to be stating today. Unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language. Because we're sped in the four corners of the the unit of the earth the four winds of the earth north south east and west and we speak different languages now as you can tell there's haitian there's uh jamaican blacks english american black americans you know so we we gotta 
know who we are and get out of those terms and names that they've been calling us for a while. So they spoke to us in our language like we're reading in English now. And to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. So everything was translated according to the language and according to the writing which was in Hebrew. Ibar. Hebrew Israelite. He, and, um, and, he, and pretty much Hebrew. Ibaria. So Mordecai might be King James. So when he wrote in the king Asurius name and sealed it with the king's ring and sent letters by post on horseback and riders on mules, camels and young dromedaries, drones, wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together. So he granted to them that the Hebrews can gather together and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them. But little ones and women, and to take both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. To take the children and the women as spoil, gifts, trophies, so verse 12, upon one day in all the provinces of King Asurias, namely upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So this is what the Bible is saying. Now you go right here to chapter 9 of Esther 9 verse 5. Thus the Jews, the Hebrews, Ibaria Sharalites, Ibar Ibaria Yasharalites, Ibaria smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they would unto those that hated them. So that's what we were commanded. All right, pardon me, I did say that was the last one, but there is one more thing I want to add on to that before we get into the meat of this. This is about our name. I believe this is going to be found in, in um, John. Hold on one second. So make sure you're writing some of this down because this is important to know why we are a nation and why their laws do not apply to us whatsoever, period. So take one second real quick. Halalahaya. All glory be to the Most High. Halalahaya. Hold on one sec. I'm still looking for this thing I want to show you guys real quick. If I don't find it right now, I'm going to just show you guys it later. Because this is um, pretty important too to add on to nationality. To who we are. Alright, so this may be in Luke. All glory and praise be to the Most High. Hold on one sec.
yeah there's a chance that um I'm gonna have to show you guys this in the next part this is pretty important too all right let me try to look one more time if I don't find it I'm gonna let it be All right, hope you guys are still with me. Just take just take a second real quick to bear with me. Absorb what we've spoken already. Absorb it all the way down, digest it, maybe edifying. All right, let me go over here. This is in John chapter 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. He is the truth of the world, the spirit of truth, which is light. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So that's in John chapter 8, verse 12. That's important to know. Let me see, are we near? <laughs> yeah, there's a chance I'm gonna have to just show you guys this in um, the next part of this video. If I find it at this last moment, that'd be really great. Hold on one sec. Yeah, most likely I'm going to have to do this in the next part. All right, that's cool then. So we're going to go ahead and continue. What I want to remember to show you guys later is about um, the surname. Your surname, which would be a last name while you make it your Sharal, Israel, Savior God. All of us from the tribe of Israel have the same last name, which is your Sharal, Israel, Yisrael. You can put it in your own language to English, but I'd rather put it in the, you know, holy tongue, holy language, Lashawan Kwadash, which is Yeshural, which means Savior God or salvation of God. All right, let's go ahead and begin our lesson for today. So this is for status correction. On and for the record. So on if, let me see where we're at on timing so far. All right. So on it for the record, I, the living man, Macintosh of the Gene family, because a lot of the, in the system, they're creating fictitious and artificial men, which are called straw men. They don't really exist, they're fictitious. And they're trying to trick people with it. You see, to, um, it's called a straw man. Look it up, straw man, legal fiction, a, a fictitious entity, a corporation, a legal person or artificial person, a split personality, a altered eagle, eagle, a veil, a jacket, a dummy corporation. These are all names for the fictitious entity. So I want to let them know uh, as part of my part of my status correction. On and for the record, I, the living man, Macintosh 
of the Jean family. I don't have a first or last name. I am I am Macintosh. I am called Macintosh. And technically, I'm from the Hebrew Israelite family. But this is the name that my family gave me, for my family. So I'm of the Jean family. Sui juris, in proper, all natural rights exclusively reserved. In proper mean in propria persona. Appropriate personality, in, pro, in your appropriate personality as a living man. Sui juris. You have the rights of a living man. In rerum natura. In the world where things are real and natural. So they use a lot of Latin in this English based system, this, bar ba this barcode based system, which is the British Admiralty Regulation System. So if you don't correct your status and declare it, they can prejudge that you're anything and who, whoever and what they want. So, I made a lot of videos about Law 2 before you should check out. So, and plus, I'm not putting um, my Hebrew Israelite name there yet. You could if you already declared your Hebrew Israelite name. But to declare your Hebrew Israelite name will take another affidavit. That's a whole nother subject. But the name that you have right now... You can use that name still and stuff to explain how, you see I'm Macintosh to the Jean family from the tribe of Levi, Lawaya, the 12 tribes of Israel, from the nation of Zion. But I can't use this name in um, Israel. When I get my status cha um, change, my name is going to be this right here. Mayak, Mayakal. So this will be Mayakal. So this right here will be Yasharal. So Yasharal means Savior God. And put this right here. So we're continuing on. So you see Mayakal means Mikael. Mikael, he who is like God. Because that's the name I'm choosing for myself. Mayak, Mayak, Mayak Al, Yasharal. That would be my Hebrew Israelite name. And Yasharal will be my so-called last name. You see? But I have to do an affidavit of name correction and name, name declaration in order to use that name on, um, on public record, under truth, you know? So in the meantime, I'm using the name that the system recognized which is the slave name Macintosh to the Jean family, which you can just simply call me the living man. So all natural rights exclusively reserved. They say if you don't reserve your rights, you don't have rights. You must reserve your rights on and for the record. So I do have a race and nationality and would like to correct that once and for all with this accurate status declaration. I, the natural living man, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, Yesharalite, Ibarra, Ibarra, Yesharalite, which you can just call Ibarra, Ibarra, Ibarra Yesharalite, Ibarra, Ibarra, Ibarra Yesharalite. So Ibarra Yesharalite from the tribe of Levi, Laoya, so-called Aisye, Haitian, with the so-called Haitians. I am not black, Negro, or African American because those fictional titles are bywords, proverbs, and adjectives. Adjective means to describe something. Oh, look at that fat thing or that skinny thing or that black and brown and purple thing. There's, those are adjectives. Oh, look at that, you know, look at that, look at that, look at that. I'm not a that. I have an, I, I'm called by a name. I have an appellation. I have appropriate personality. So in other words, in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37, Ahaya God said, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword, among all nations whither the Lord, Ahaya, Yahaya, pardon me, The Lord, Yahaya, shall lead thee. So black, negro, white, yellow, green, and or, African American are not nationalities and or races of people. 
In other words, it is racist and prejudiced to call a man or woman, woman, pardon me. So it is racist to call a man or woman black or white according to proper grammar so it is racist to um to call a man or woman black or white according to proper grammar because their skin is dark and full of melanin So it's racist to call someone black or white as, um, based on their skin color. And it's racist to say that it is your race and nationality based on your skin color. That's color of law. That's not a real nation in, in race. So therefore, black, white, Latino, Hispanic, Indian, all these are bywords and proverbs. They're not the original name, even black and white. Black, some black white people are from from uh, China. I mean, some white people are from Russia. Some white people from um, uh, Italy. Some white people from Spain. Some white people from the Caucasus Mountain. You know, there's some black people from Egypt. Some black people from Africa. Some black people from Trinidad. So you know, so you can't really call them black and white. That's a general assumption. That's prejudice. So it's racist and prejudice to call a man or woman black or white according to proper grammar and you can't judge someone based on their um dark skin their rich their rich dark and melanated skin our skin is dark which mean dark it's a shade and the, and the so-called white people's skin are are bright they are light not even bright but light their skin is light so it is light and dark you see what i'm saying it doesn't mean they're of light because the only light that exists is truth but they're lighter and we're darker you see we're not black and and white white mean purity and pure and sanctified and black mean wicked dirty and, and nasty so we're not wicked dirty and nasty and be black and you see that the judge according to the bible every judge is a priest every priest is a judge and they're supposed to wear white why because white stand for purity they were all black, which stand for wickedness. So they're wicked judges. They're doing witchcraft on people in there. On top of that, black and white, on top of that, their, their dictionary is called the Black's Law Dictionary. That's the legalese book, where all the words in that book does not mean what you think they mean in your uh, regular language. Like person in, in our regular language would be a human or a living, breathing man or woman, a soul. But if you go into the courtroom, according to their Black's Law Dictionary and the words that they use, a person means a corporation, a fictitious entity, someone who's dead. So you go in there saying you're a person, you're pretty much claiming you're dead. A birth to them in their dictionary means a death, to put some at a stop. A corporation in their book means something that don't exist, a fictitious entity, a legal fiction, an artificial person, a split personality. In their book, driving means someone who works for the government and they're on the job. So they need a lie to your sense, permission to be driving on the job as someone who worked for the government in a government vehicle. The word vehicle in their book means the um, vehicle of the government, the automobile transportation of the government, like the airplane, the bus, school bus, um, taxi, uh, fire truck, ambulance truck, all those are um, driver um, vehicles that mean vehicles or transportation for the government people at work for the government traffic traffic law traffic court traffic mean a traffic like you're trafficking drugs trafficking humans so they're saying you are trafficking goods while you were on the job while you were in your vehicle or in your private um, automobile locomotion so you got to watch watch out because if you don't know their words in their Black's Law Dictionary, which is a book of sorcery, witchcraft, and voodoo, legalese of, um, of their law book, which is the law terms and conditions they use on you, if you don't understand it, you're going to get swallowed in court. 
By the way, black and white was created by the government. Therefore, it's owned by the government. And the government own it. So when you say you're white or black, you're saying that the government own you. When you're saying that you're a citizen of the United States Incorporate and interna international intercorporate corporate business, and you vote for their a president, which is the CEO of that business, and you claim you're a citizen, you're pretty much stating that they're your owner. See, I'm trying to tell them that they don't own me. And this is how I begin by letting them know who I'm not and who I am. That this is all part of the status correction. You must declare this on and for the record. So I, Macintosh of the Jean family, hereby called and known as the peaceful natural living man on the land, suggest that you call me man, because that is what my creator named me when he created me on the sixth day of creation. So for example, the King James Holy Bible, 1611 version, it states in Genesis chapter one, verse 26, a higher God said, let us make man in our image. Ahaya Alayam said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Dominion means sovereignty, freedom. And let them have dominion over the fowl of the air. And let man have dominion over the cattle. And let man have dominion over all the earth and the cattle on the earth. And let man have dominion over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Ahaya, God, the Almighty, the Supreme, He that exists, He, he that the existing, He that only exists, the everlasting, created man in His own image. In the image of God, created He Him. In the image of I am, that I am, created He Him, male and female created he them so the most high god created man and woman not the government not man anything they do against nature and life itself and against god is an act of war you must know this you must know this so and a higher god blessed them and Ahaya said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion, sovereignty, over the fish of the sea, and have sovereignty over the fowl of the air, and have sovereignty over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So this was what God told us, and He called us man. So on it for the record, Re re reference to me as man call me man the peaceful living breathing man so I am who and what I am a man and I am not what and who I am not a legal fiction an artificial person an officer a cop a woman all that I am not what I am not unless you can prove the contrary prove that I am what I am not so in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, I am that I am, Ahaya, Ashur, Ahaya, Yahaya, Ashur, Yahaya. So God is who God is. Therefore, Ahaya, I am not. I am not the all caps name, legal fiction entity or officer of the state of Florida or the state of whatever state you're in, which is a corporation called copyright and trademark mark name Macintosh Jean because I copyright in and trademark the name as well and you need to copyright and trademark your name so they don't use it without your permission the all caps name and state what it is a business a corporation a record label what is this trademark and copyright name it's a corporation or a trust a trust a dummy corporation transmitting utility you see a business a corporation because it's fictitious so I am NOT that all caps legal fiction entity or officer of the state of Florida called copyright and trademark name all caps name this and that with first and last name because it has a first and last name is dead so in other words sheriff number and jacket number etc seven numbers so on your court paperwork though um write a jacket number the jacket number is your sheriff number 
So they, they create a fictitious sheriff number for you, which is not you, and you did not give them permission. So you put that sheriff number, aka jacket number, in here to reference to this fictitious officer or legal fiction they're trying to state that you are, which you are not. And they have no proof to the contrary that you work for the state unless you do. The state corporation, intercorporation, international intercorporation, a nation within a nation's nation, and, and a corporation within a corporation's corporation. I wouldn't be surprised if they're intercontinental, a continent within a continent's continent, and there's a government within a government's government, something like a secret society in a mass deception scheme against the people themselves that they had bare the promise and oath to protect and serve. A secret society, a covetous society, a society that you're part and you are not aware that you're part of it. Ill light, it's not luminescent, it's illegitimate, illegal, illuminescent, ill light, dark, they're dark, black, not even dark, they're black. So the principal defendant summoned to court is Macintosh Jean, and I am not that entity. And look at this right here, summoned. How can you summon a human? Summon means to summon a spirit. We summon you now, Yahya Shai, to come into this room and manifest now in the name of Christ and the Holy Spirit. We call upon you, Christ. That's enchantment. That is voodoo. That's sorcery. So they're trying to summon a dead entity that you're not. That they gave a jacket number to cover it up in a jacket and zip you up code, zip code which they probably say is a driver, someone who's engaging in trafficking goods back and forth, engaging in commerce in your own private locomo um, locomotion, which you call a vehicle, and that they want you to appear out of nowhere now, boof, and become that thing. Put yourself in the shoe of this thing that don't exist and let all hell fall on top of your dome. That's what they're trying to say. So hold what you have fast, so that no man take thy crown, which is Christ. Christ is my only God. I have a contract with God Almighty, not with man. Let's clarify this. And I'm from the tribe of Yeshurael. I have no first or last name. I am called by a name. And I'm from this tribe, family, or nation. So I have a nation, I have a race, and I have a tribe. I have my own culture, traditions, and all that. So therefore, you don't have jurisdiction over me. Which means you don't have power over this case. You don't have authority over me. Like the laws of China cannot apply or be applicable to those who is in America or in Africa. And you can't bring Africa's law over here to America and try to charge someone based on African law. So they can't charge me based on English laws, England laws from England. And nor can they take me away from the contract and everlasting covenant I have with the Most High. That's why Christ said, if ye love me, you will keep my commandment. Because he knew that we're, we would be pulled away from it. We would be pulled away from our holy nation and, and serve another nation which used to serve us. Which will be going back into captivity according to Revelation and Isaiah. And they will be handmaids and um, servants, lest they die by the sword of the Most High. Yeshaya. So our nation must be established in righteousness, holiness, love, peace, and truth. And if they smite one cheek, we must give them the other cheek and do what the Most High command. The Most High will tell you what to do, when to do it, because according to the ecclesiastical laws, Ecclesiastes, there's a time for war and there's a time for peace. It's all about using the gift of discernment and thought, thought provoke thought provoking or to think about thoughts that are provoking to make you think what time we're in so now you gotta use the gift of the discernment the gift of discernment to discern if we're in a time of war or if we're in a time of peace are they breaking the pre-peace or are they um, engaging in an act of war is this a peace officer someone who's supposed to be keeping peace and I infringing on my religious beliefs and rights and all stuff? Or is this a corporate tax officer which is coming to enforce corporate laws on corporate officers? 
So they're assuming you're a corporate officer of their corporation, which is private, the Federal Reserve. All caps, legal fiction. So you must know this. So in addition, a real man or woman cannot appear all of a sudden. In other words, poof, like magic, witchcraft, voodoo, and sorcery. Witches summon dead entities and spirits like conjuring the devil. And it appears as a real man. I cannot appear out of nowhere. You must invite me and I choose to come or not. Like, hey, Mac, you want to go to a party? No. Thank you for asking. Thank you for the invite. But when you're dealing with court, they treat it like you must come. And you have no choice but to come. And unfortunately, you do because you're forced to, which means if you're discerning what's going on, we're under a time of war. They're breaching the peace. We might end up being prisoners of war. They engage in, in unlawful actions against us, against nature itself. Who did I injure? What did I hurt? What did I break? Where's the injured party? Where, where's the accuser? Why can't I face my accuser? Why, why isn't it um, 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 admissible or valuable to place evidence and proof on and for the record? What's wrong with me asking where's the proof in evidence? What's wrong with me making a conditional acceptance upon my own conditions, terms, and agreement? Since I am a, I am a, a private contractor, non-domestic to the United States Incorporated. Matter of fact, foreign. Not sharing the same values in jurisdiction, not even part of the same society. Because society means a group of people gathered in mutual agreement for mutual goals. So if they have no proof that you're part of their group and party under contract, it's an invite. So they're inviting you to go to court. They can't summon you. You must invite me and I choose to come or not. So if I don't come to your party, will you throw me in jail? A court mean bas there's basketball courts, tennis courts, football courts. This is just a court of fictitious law. That's all it is. It's a playing field, a battlefield. And he who leaves the battlefield first loses the fight. So therefore, I conditionally accept your claim if you prove it. And if you don't prove your claim, you are the first to leave the field, which means you pretty much lost. You have no standing in this case. You have no claim which relief can be granted. Improper venue, lack of jurisdiction, Lack of proof, evidence, consent, or consideration. Lack of full disclosure. L lack of um, service. Proper service, which would be to get the paper notarized. To have a bilateral contract running two ways. All these things you need to know in order to know why you can say what we're about to learn herein. Now, right now, this is nothing yet. This is just a little intro. We're going to go into Bible quotes. We might end up doing it in part two. Yeah, we might end up doing it in part two. This will be the beginning. So, so, def, so you must invite me and I choose to come or not. Therefore, I, the real man, have come. I have come. I came. I mean, I came from point A to point B. I didn't just poof up here at B or Z. I came. So therefore I, the real man, which is my name according to God, have come to present the truth. Not represent the truth, but to present the truth based on special appearance and special invitation. I, Macintosh of the Jean family, hereby and henceforth known as man, am a living soul, breathing, a living breathing soul, with a clear and sound mind and conscience. So my mind is clear and sound. And I am conscience. I am con conscious, deliberate, and aware. Purposeful. Deliberate. With a clear and sound and conscious and deliberate mind. Endowed with unalienable and unleanable. Lean mean to put a claim on something. Alienable mean to abduct, to take. 
So an unalienable and unlienable natural God given rights. So natural Ahaya given rights or Yahaya given rights. Yahaya Shah. Under Ahaya God Almighty, do hereby declare, state, and attest. So I, the living, breathing soul, endowed with unalienable rights, natural rights, under God Almighty, do hereby declare, state, attest, affirm, and proclaim. I'm not swearing. We're not supposed to swear. I attest, I affirm, which means it's true and righteous, what I'm saying, true and faithful. I declare, I state, which means I'm saying this, and I proclaim, so beforehand I proclaim that all that I state herein under penalties of perjury. Perjury is under laws of lying according to the law. If you lie, you're a perjurer. That means you have bared false witness. Thou shalt not commit perjury. Which means thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not give false record, and thou shalt not bear false testimony. Nor shalt thou um, bring false um, witnesses. So everything must be done true and correct. And it's under my full liability in this affidavit of fact. So, I do hereby declare, state, attest, affirm, and proclaim that all that I state herein under penalties of perjury, under my full liability in this affidavit of fact, is true, correct, and not misleading. To the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowing, and to the best of my ability, and is, and, and is executed in righteousness, good, good faith, truth and honor likewise so to the best of my knowing would mean based on what you guys told me i don't know who you government people are i don't know why i'm in this courtroom i don't know what a statute is but all i know and what i understand is what i'm stating herein and it is true correct and not misleading to the best of my knowledge so bear with me and it's true to the best of my knowing, which means based on what's been fully disclosed to me. Because even if you're in a bilateral contract, any fraud or deception can nullify that contract, make it null and void, invaluable, blot it out. And this, this is true to the best of my ability, to what I know at this point and can write and state and proclaim. And it is executed, I'm executing this in righteousness, good faith, truth, and honor, likewise, which is all the traits of God Almighty. Yahayashai al Shaday. Or Yahayashai Shaday. Yahayasha, Yahaya Shaday. So God, the existing, or God is, or God am Almighty. So, may the spirit of truth be my witness, here, now, and present, and may Ahaya God, Almighty, Ahaya Shaday, judge between me, you, us, and them. I affirm, I affirm mean Aman. That's why you say Aman at the end of every good thing the pastor says. You're saying we confirm that is true, that is true and righteous, Aman. We believe the same. So may God be our witness and judge between me, you, us, and them. I affirm. So black, which means wicked and evil. Oh, pardon me. Alright, hold on one sec. Hold on one sec, y'all. There's a little error here that I gotta fix up real quick. Alright, that's straight right there. Hold 
Hold on one second, y'all. Hold on one second, y'all. We're going to have to make a change here. You know what? I'm going to leave this the same. I'm going to fix that up. I got to fix it up. But we're going to continue on. So this right here, black, was supposed to be describing what we're describing up there. It's supposed to go up there where I was talking about um, I'm not black. You know, it's racist to call someone black. So it's racist and prejudice to call someone black, which means wicked and evil because his skin color is dark, beautiful, and full of mel melanin. So hold on, let's continue on. So it is racist to call a man or woman black, which means wicked or evil because his skin is dark and beautiful and full of melanin. And melanin is the secret ingredient in the black people's skin. That's why we're able to um, bear the sun. And Christ too is um, can bear the sun because he's dark skin. So in addition, not every dark skin people or white skin people are from the same tribe, race, and or nation. Some of us have different beliefs. We have we, we, the Hebrew Yeshuaites, have our own language. In other words, Hebrew is our language. Ibaria. We have our own traditions. We have our own beliefs. We have our own set of religion. We, although we're not religious. We have our own set of spiritual conviction. Our own spiritual conviction. And we have our own culture. So in other words, the Holy Bible and the truthful words of Ahaya Almighty is our belief, spirituality, tradition, religion, and culture. So what is our culture? The Holy Bible and the truthful words of Ahaya God. These are the laws of our nation. Mount Zion, Zion, the children of Yasharal, Israel. So... The Holy Bible and the truthful words of a higher God Almighty is our belief, spirituality, tradition, religion, and culture. In a higher God Almighty we trust, and we do not serve a second master or man. God is a jealous God and will repay us according to our deeds and, and works. Wink, wink. We have our own natural laws and universal laws, which is in alignment with common sense and nature itself. And we have our own statutes, codes, ordinances, bylaws, officers, judges, workers, servants, acts, and commands. So, we have our own set of everything. We're our own nation. We got to take ourselves out of their jurisdiction completely. Where we're not even using any of their faculties or facilities and areas at all. 
We're just declaring our own stuff through their system because we're our own separate and holy nation. Holy means to consecrate, to set aside, to make for one's own. We're holy unto God. He had chosen us out of the whole crowd. We're not tainted like the other nations unless we like to live like the other nations and remain cursed. So the only way out of the curse now is becoming one with the Most High's truth. And the Most High's truth happened to be our nation's law and our religious law and spiritual law. It's the law of everything that we believe, even the law of the house, the Ten Commandments. So in other words, we're in an everlasting covenant contract with the higher God Almighty. The um, contract covenant is the law of the universe. You can make a contract with a rat, you have to keep that contract. Contract is the law of the universe. Therefore, if you have no contract with them, no agreement, and you don't consent, everything is an act of war against your will. Because you have free will, you have free choice. You can free willingly do what you want to do as long as it don't hurt anybody or destroy anything. Or breach the peace. So we're peacefully declaring and proclaiming our status. It's called a status correct correction under affidavit. We're not going to get too much into affidavit right now. I'll get into the affidavit for nationality another time. Right now, we're just building the fundamental building blocks to why we can do what we're doing and what we're saying, what we're, why we're saying what we're saying. We need to know this, Hebrew Israelites, Yesharites, children of the Most High, children of the truth, the spirit of truth. So, in other words, we're in an everlasting, everlasting, eternal covenant contract with Ahaya God Almighty. In other words, the Ten Commandments. And, and there are terms, conditions, and penalties in our contract. In other words, in the Holy Bible. We'll get punished and penalized and suffer curses if we don't keep the contract. And we'll be blessed, we'll be multiplied and be fruitful and be replenished if we keep the contract. And put above all nations. So in our contract with the higher God Almighty, there are terms, conditions, and penalties. So y'all need to know this. So we are compelled to, to keep and perform what we promise to keep and perform. And so is the Most High compelled to keep and perform what the Most High promised to keep and perform. That's a bilateral contract. God agreed, you agreed. That's not a unilateral contract running one way. That is a bilateral contract. That is extremely binding. It's deliberate and explicit, not tacit or by acquiescence or default. It's deliberate intentionally and, and, and been done consciously. Like a contract should be done intentionally, willingly, consciously and with full disclosure. Well, what are you willingly, intentionally, consciously um, consenting to that must have full disclosure? An offer, consideration, and consent running both ways. Both people make an offer. I give you this, you give me that. The other person say, I give you this, you give me that. So everyone's saying what they want and what they'll give. Now, it must be a value, fair value must be valuable not paper it must weigh something it must mean something and you guys must consent to what you guys considered valuable which was part of the offer that you consented to authorize signature signed signed spelled in cursive bound and affirmed under penalties of perjury intentionally willingly consciously and while being fully disclosed she must know that. That's deep. So we are compelled to keep and perform what we promise to keep and perform to the Most High. We can't serve man or another master. We can't serve two masters. Which is to live in peace, love one another, serve no idols, do unto others what, what you want others to do unto you. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit fornication. And do not bear false witness which mean do not bear false testimonies or do not um, commit perjury. And I shall not break my oath, which they should not break their oath of office to protect and uphold the people in the constitution of the land, America, and the constitution of our holy nation. 
us we're not under the constitution we're not under statute statutory contractual officer law we're not under maritime admiralty we're not under the bar code bar association we're not under the un united nations and the uk united kingdom we're not part of the north american union corporation we are hebrew israelites children of god the most high yah Ahaya, and we shall serve only the Most High Ahaya, Bahasham Yeshaya, Yahayasha, Waharawak Kwadash, in the Holy Spirit of Truth. That's my master. May the truth make me free today in this courtroom. And I shall not break my oath. I shall not break my oath. And I shall not break my integrity. And I have not broken any of the commands. So therefore, I broke no law. I broke no contract. Therefore, I did not break the promise, the contract, the covenant that I did make. With, with who? With God Almighty. Called Ahaya. Exodus 3.14. And I have made no promises. I have made no promises to the state of blah yada yada whatever state you're of whatever whatever state's trying to sue you in all caps that's not the land so state of florida incorporated inc palm beach county whatever county you're in palm beach county incorporated inc or palm beach county sheriff's office inc incorporated the united states corporation incorporation England, the barcode, or the accuser that compels me to perform. So I have made no promises that compels me to perform. If you have any proof that I willingly made an oath of office, because it's the oath that make the office, and if you make an oath so you can receive the office to be a bishop, a president, a lawyer, a judge, a doctor, you must keep that oath. You must keep that promise. You, if you have not made a promise in the oath, you're not eligible to be in the position that you're, you're delusionally thinking you're in. You're just a criminal wearing a costume like it's Halloween day and you took it too far and people obeyed you and took that too far and eventually people start treating you like a real judge, a real officer, a real doctor when you have no oath and made no promise that will compel you to perform the positive duties that we need you to perform. We need people to take care of this position. Can you take this position? Can you handle this job? Yes, I promise to do this. I vow to do it. I swear, holding your hand on the Bible and all. Well, that oath just gave you an office. And now you're compelled to perform. Now, if we sue you or fire you, what we are suing you for, based on the terms and conditions that you had promised to perform and keep. So if you have any proof that I willingly made an oath of office or made a vow or made a promise to keep, act, or perform any duties, responsibilities, or etc. for anybody else but God Almighty, uh, uh, for anybody else except Ahaya Almighty, Please prove your claim now or forever hold your peace. So this is the way you declare your status on it for the record in the courtroom. You can shorten it, you can lengthen it, you can do what you want. It's better to keep it simple, short, and brief. So I am not compelled to perform any undisclosed contracts that I did not consciously, deliberately, and willingly enter in with my own free will consent. Hey, you owe me a billion dollars. You're on contract with me, although you're not. And I'm going to sue you as if it's true and get away with it somehow. No one will see that I am a fraud and a liar, an embezzler, a white collar criminal, a deceiver, an adversary. Oh, no one will know. Even you won't know that you have no contract with me because you won't ask about it. And when you ask about it, I'll hold you in contempt for asking about truth, proof, and evidence, as well as challenging the jurisdiction, which is very important, as the Federal Reserve Courts know and the Supreme Courts know, and that the inferior courts need to know too. Jurisdiction. Once it is challenged, it must be proven. So... 
I did not consciously, deliberately, and willingly enter into a promise, a contract, or a vow, or a marriage, or agreement with my own free will consent, which means it's coercion, duress, force, abuse of power. You're going against the law of God. You just broke the law of nature. And you're under contract with God Almighty too. Why you think God want to kill you? Because you're not keeping his laws and commandments. Now he want to kill you. Sending evil upon the evil. And wicked upon the wicked. You think Abba Ahaya is playing? Yahaya is not playing. Yahaya Shah. My salvation. God, my salvation. Ahaya, my salvation. So, consent, contract, evidence, and proof are vital and essential to establish subject, matter, jurisdiction, S, M, J. What's the subject? What's the matter about the subject? What's the jurisdiction over the subject in the matter? So, consent, contract, evidence, and proof is jurisdiction. So before they can get to the subject matter, they need to establish jurisdiction. Who's in power? What's in power? What gives them power? An oath of office, an oath and a promise gives power. An oath and a promise is jurisdiction. Did you contract with China to be under China's law while you're in America? I promise to be under China's law while I'm in America? Did you make some promise like that with England where now they're putting English statutory contractual laws on you? British Esquire laws, people under titles of nobility and color of law, veils and deception. Did you make that contract deliberately, willingly and consciously with full disclosure? Because it is vital and essential to establish the subject that's causing the complaint. So if you're complaining that I broke a subject of what gives jurisdiction, the subject and matter of the con contract or evidence of proof, you must furnish it on and for the record. On and for the record so the record and the people can righteously judge and weigh out the evidence and proof. The jury, a competent jury, that's not receiving gifts and incentives so they can rule in the favor of those who pay them. Like, I pay you guys to lie for me. That's bearing false witness. And everyone that's involved in that just partaked in perjury and treason. It's a treacherous action deemed of death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of perjury and treason is death. Especially treason. So never declare, swear, or affirm something you, you are not sure about. And don't affirm and state something that someone else tell you. State, affirm, and declare what you feel is your truth to the best of your know knowing and ability at the current time. You throw that in just in case you find out what you said was kind of a lie and you didn't know the truth during that time. Well, it was during that time. It was to the best of my ability. I'm open up for reproof and correction. Teach me, correct me, where am I wrong? Do we have a contract? Refreshing my brain and memory. So therefore, if you do not have my written and notarized consent, written and notarized consent, a contract with me, proof, evidence, audio, or my written and notarized consent to validate your claims, to validate jurisdiction over the subject matter, which I am confident that you don't and won't be able to furnish. I hereby challenge the subject, matter, and jurisdiction of this case. And then you go into your explanations why. One, who is the state of blah, blah, blah? Two, who is sheriff number, jacket number, etc.? Three, where's the contract or consent for this jurisdiction? Four, um, uh, let me see. Where's a true bill in commerce or receipt that we engage in exchange because we're in a commercial court? Five. What is a statute? Six. How do you get under statute law? Seven. Or how do you contract to be statute? Seven. 
how much do I get paid by hour? Eight. If I work for the state, um, when did I begin working and when did I stop working? Nine. Can you prove with a, a IRS tax form 1099 OID and 1040 that I or a W-4 form that I work for the state? Because this is a taxable event. This is a commercial interest, a commercial transaction, a commercial interest, a security interest. So if I am working for you and you're getting paid and you're stating that I'm an officer and I should be getting paid, can you prove that you are lawfully reporting tax? So in other words, to make it short, can you prove that the sheriff worked for you or that I work with you? If the sheriff number, jacket number, etc., 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 or if I work for you, can you prove with an IRS 1040 form a 1040, a 1099 OID form, or and with a W, a W4 form that I am registered with the state of whatever. Ten. Why? Um. Do I have a badge? You know, whatever you would write, and then after that, you put, you, you'll notarize it. You'll um get two or three witnesses on it, cause at the mouth for two or three witnesses may everything be established. A matter may be established and then send it off to the courtroom uh, certified mail or registered mail go through a USPS um, um, the USPS service to get the cards I believe when it's 3811 that's the green card the um, signature return signature card you need a certify um, the certified mail card or you can use registered mail cards but always use the return signature card and you're gonna send it to their address and and if they don't rebut it or anything like that they enter default so now I enter another I'll explain that in detail in a different video you know I'll go into that in a different video but for y'all that been watching my law stuff and know um, the things that I taught about law throughout all the videos on my page and on my other website www.com YouTube no www.youtube.com forward slash Archangel Macintosh A R C H A N G E L M A K I N T O C H. You can also go to youtube.com forward slash the numerical one one Archangel Macintosh and it's spelled the same way. So the symbol one. Not O N E, but the letter one. One A R C H A N G E L M A K I N T O C H. One Archangel Macintosh. And this website, where this video is mainly put up on, is my other website because they've been messing around my my um, accounts. Is um, YouTube.com forward slash Ahaya Yeshaya one one. A H A Y A H A H A Y A H A Ha Ya Yeshaya Y A S H A I Y A and eleven Ahaya Yeshaya one one and I got a lot of videos there about uh, you know the government about the system about law about family about nationality about Hebrew Israelites about blacks whites native everyone everything so check out the page be fruitful may be edifying and let me see where we're at on time so all right we're gonna continue on in part two now this is where we're gonna start using biblical proof to establish this so we begin with this um, so far the calling of Abram Abariam Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great that's what God said after he called Abram Abariam and thou shalt be a blessing so our nation is a blessing for the nations. We have the word of God and the oracles of God with us, the Most High. He has not dealt so with any other nation but ours. This is unique, rare, and extremely new. Extremely new. We're the first fruits. 
the first fruit of the nations as a nation to crumble, go to pain and persecution and, and be furnished and re, um, refurbished through the fire of affliction. Just like Christ was the first fruit of the people within the tribe of Israel. So Christ, well, Christ, which is like Abraham, which is like Isaac, which is like Jacob, Jacob, which is like Joseph, which is like um, King David, Christ, Yahayashai, Yahayashai, or Yeshaya, was the first fruit of the people within the nation of Israel to go through what they went through. And Judah and Levi, the Haitians and the so-called Negroes were the first fruits to do and go through what they went through too. So we have people who are leaders in this new thing that's going on, this new project going on on earth that the Most High been working on since the beginning, since Adam, because we're descendants of Adam, but we're Shemites. Not just Shemites, but from the tribe of, from a descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our forefathers, which walked in faith and feared no man, while they walked the earth faithfully, righteously, and honorably, in the in the faith of the Most High Truth, and we're specifically from um, Father Jacob, Jacob, which was renamed Israel, Yeshurah. And the people called us Hebrew, Ibar, because we f were different from them, far from them, not the same. So that's where that word come from. And on top of that, not only is Christ the first fruit of the people within the tribe, the Haitians are the first fruit to be priests within the tribe, the way that they are. That's why the Most High God is their inheritance. The Most High God is the inheritance of Levi, Lao Ya, the Haitian, the priests. And they were the first to gain their independence and to revolt against the French in Haiti, IET, and became the first black republic. Le République, Le Union fait la Union. Le Union fait République. So our union makes the republic, which makes our nation. And it started off with Toussaint Louveti and a couple other people, but Haitians fell off. They forgot who they were. They forgot their nation and, and, and started to adapt to the Europeans way of living, the French. That's why they speak Creole right now, not La Shawan Kwadash. And they call Haitian, which is a bright word, a proverb. Aisea, which is not the real name. We're Levites, Lawaya. So you must know who you are. So Haitians were the, they're the poorest people in the country because they were the richest in the country when they were priests and they are still priests of Israel. If they keep the commands and come back into alignment of God Almighty and not Maman, dollars, voodoo, and material. That's why Haitians are so powerful. God loves Haitians. He loves Haitians and he loves so-called Negroes and Jamaicans and Hispanics and Indians, the black ones, the dark-skinned ones, pardon me, the ones with rich melanin in their skin. So I And I will bless them that bless thee, so he will bless them that bless us, and curse him that curseth thee, and curse them that curse us, those who harm us. So I, we ask the Most High to forgive our enemies, to, to be kind and, and, and nurturing. That doesn't mean be a punk. That doesn't mean be a floor mat and a pushover. That's not what we stand for. We stand firm as men of God. And the Most High is a man of war, according to Exodus. So Ahaya is a man of war. He'll destroy you with plagues, elements, the um, uh, the nation. He'll, he'll use the elements against you, nature. He'll use your best friends against you, your, your children, your family. He'll use your own body, your own thoughts against you. He'll use your own feelings against you. The Most High is not someone to contempt or blaspheme. We must keep the commands. We must keep the contract, guys. And we will be saved and rescued from whatever we're going through. Yes, Shahaya. 
Yahaya Sha Yaha Yahaya Shaya Yahaya Shaya Yes Shaya Ahaya Shaya Yahaya Shaya Yahaya Shai Ahaya Yasha O Yashahaya Yasha Ahaya Yashaya Savior God, God is my salvation, God is my Savior, my Redeemer. Hawashai, salvation. Or Hayashai. So, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So all families of the earth will be blessed through Abraham. No one else, not Japheth, not him. And although Abraham's seed was blessed, two of the tribes weren't chosen, which is Ishmael, the Isla Islamic people, and the other people that weren't chosen is Esau, which is the European people. They sold their birthright to us, the rednecks, the one that's red. So if you're going to be claiming you're a Hebrew Israelite, but under our nationality, under our law, under our holy book, under our holy authority and holy God and holy Christ and the holy truth, the Holy Spirit, which have chosen his holy children, Yesharal, named after the Holy Father, Yahaya, you will have to convert. You cannot use our book and our words and expect us not to crumble you. You can't build your nation off of our word and truth. You must join us. You must come into us. Use our life you want. The Most High will wreck you because it wasn't meant for you. You are considered an enemy if you're not pro us. You're against us, which means you're anti us. Like we're anti Satan and y'all are anti Christ. If you're not pro Christ, you're pro Satan. So I'm anti Satan and pro Christ. So if you're pro Christ, you're pro the truth. And he said, I only come to the, I come to save the children of Israel. Not only them, I have some of the flock that's not here with us right now that I must save too. And they will receive a new name. They'll be called the children of God. So if you want to be saved by these national laws of us Hebrew Israelites, you must convert. You must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Call on the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit in his name. Like according to our book, believe in Christ, keep, in his, keep his words, keep the commandments both in Old Testament and New Testament, Old Testimony and New Testimony, and confess that Christ is your Savior. And confess that the children of Yeshua are the children of God. Because God said it himself. And Christ was an Israelite. So was King David, so was Jacob, Abraham, Moses, and all of them. We're all Hebrew Israelite. You can't come into our group and nation without going through us, going through the assembly. You can't meet our Lord or come to our Lord without going through us. Where you going? Move back, disperse, remove yourself now in the name of Christ, Yahweh Shai. Yahya Shai. Yeshaya. So, Ahaya, God, God's covenant with Abram. So, God's covenant with Abaram or Abaram. Abaram. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord, the word of Ahaya, came unto Abram, Abaram, in a vision, saying, Fear not, don't fear, O nation of Zion. Of Israel, Yesharal, Abram, Abarayam, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So the Most High told Abarayam or Abaram, Fear not, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So before we continue on in our next um, page, I wanted to end it off right here. Because we this there's gonna be a couple of parts to this video. You will know your nationality and what to claim now once and for all. So hold on one second, y'all.
hold down All right, I love this right here. This is in um, Luke chapter 12, verse 1. Beware ye of the leaving of the Pharisees, of the doctors of law, the doctors that are in your hospital, the doctors of school, the doctors, anyone who teaches you something is a doctor. They're supposed to be giving you remedy. And Pharisee also means president overall, someone who is a president, which is hypocrisy. So leaving is their um, hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. So therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the air and closets shall be proclaimed upon the rooftops, upon the housetops. So, this is verse 9 of chapter 12 of Luke. He that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of Ahaya, God. And whoso, alayom, alayom Ahaya, and whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, Yahayasha, or Yahayasha, Yeshaya, Yahawashai, it shall be forgiven him, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit, the Holy Truth, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Truth shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. So remember that. So this is in Luke chapter 10 verse 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me. Despise it him that sent me. So love what the Most High is saying. It is important that we keep true to these words. All right, before we finish off, hold on one second. Okay, this is in Luke chapter 8, verse 39. Return to thine own house, and show how great things a higher God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city, and how great things Yahayashai, Yahawashai, had done unto him. So publish this, proclaim this on top of the rooftops. All right, hold on one sec. So this is in um, Luke chapter 6, verse 39. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the a parable mean metaphor? Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. So we're here to be as our master. Hold on one sec. So this is in Luke chapter 3 verse... Verse 14. 
do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. So verse 15, and as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them, to them all, I indeed baptize you with water. You must be baptized. And what and what but one mightier than I cometh. But one mightier than I cometh. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, with the holy truth and with light. So now verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Yahayashai, also being baptized, praying the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit, Rawak Kwadash, descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee am I well pleased. All right, hold on one sec. All right, I believe I'm near what I was looking for. Hold on. So he says right here in Mark chapter 7, verse um, verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, Ahaya, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, Ahaya, that ye may keep your own tradition. And that's true, many people won't break out of their, their, their traditions because they've, they're in a reprobate mind. They've been tricked and to believe in that, you see, and to believing a lie. Hold on one second, y'all. Hold on one sec. All right, what I'm looking for, I'll find it another time, but I do want to end it off with this right here. These last two parts. This is in um, Hoshua, which means Hawashai, or Hayashai, Hoshua. Hosea, people say. It's not really Hosea, though. Alright. <laughs> All right, this is in Hosea, which is Hoshua, Hawashai, which means salvation. So Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, Ahiah, I will also forget thy children. So you got to make sure you keep the commands of God, man. These are all the terms and conditions, you know. And if you breach this, this, this term and condition, you know what I'm saying? You're only going to be punished. You're only going to be punished and the Most High is not going to give you any reward. Because you did nothing worthy of reward. So, uh, alright, so there's one more thing I want to show you guys. This is in Matthew. And know that we're not fighting against um, flesh and blood. But we're fighting against spirits. Ephesians 6.10. We're fighting against dark forces. For dark forces of wickedness. So when we t talk to you, we're mainly talking from the point of view of spirit. We're in a spiritual battle, as well as physical. So this is in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your father truth which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents. And cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Ahaya, Yeshaya, Yahawashai. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So... Endure it to the end, and you shall be shit saved. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Yahaya Shah Barakata, or Yahaya Yahaya Bahasham Yahawashai Barakata, or Yahaya Barakata Bahasham Yahasha. Yahaya Shah, Yahaya Shah. Aman.